Nima Yemeni, welcome to the Kill Stream, sir. Why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Hey, thank you so much, uh, Ethan and uh, Baker. I, you know, I'm really glad I met you guys. I, uh, I had no idea when I went on this, uh, you know, confrontation with Nick Fuentes. I had no idea. I just thought he was someone that was pushing hate, hate and bigotry. And I had no idea how many people who knew him would reach out. I mean, even just before this call, the amount of people that gave me information to, you know, talk about the show today. I wasn't able to like fully remember everything, you know, but um, it's, it's remarkable how many skeletons are in this kid's closet. It really, as someone who, who's not familiar with the space, I mean, I do a lot of comedy content, my background's an entrepreneur, um, but I, I, I was just really amazed at how many people reached out to me that said, hey, you know, we know Nick, um, or we know someone who was close to Nick, and um, basically, yeah, there's pedophilia, homosexuality rampant in that group. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of people don't want to, uh, they don't want to go public because Nick has an army of, you know, teenagers that'll, that'll basically harass, taunt, and slander your name on social media. The great hypocrisy is how much Nick slanders and lies about other people. But the moment you talk about him, especially pedophilia, uh, and homosexuality, how thin skin he is. Hopefully, a lot more people. Hopefully, and one last thing. Hold, uh, you know, sure, if, go I, ahead. if I can. Sure. I, I, I think that a dam was broken about Nick. I think, I think after this, a lot more people are going to be willing to speak up. That's it. Of, I, I, I think, yeah, that's it. I was going to say I do too. And, and you mentioned skeletons in his closet. That's not the only thing in his closet. <laughs> it's a little bit of the uh, of the background with the value tainment stuff, uh, and we'll get more into the details on, on Fuentes as well. But um, how did that come about in the first place? Yeah, so basically, I, I was friends with Sneeko. You know, uh, I still like him a lot. I know I've met him, met up with him, collaborated with him. And uh, at first, I just thought it was really, you know, odd, that, you know, that he was supporting Nick Fuentes especially with the language Nick Fuentes uses. And I'm not a liberal, by the way. I live in Germany. I live here in Florida. I have a home in both countries. My wife's an evangelical Christian. I am Jewish, uh, but I'm clearly not German. Uh, I was born, born in the United States. So, you know, I, I, for me in Germany, I see how, how horrific what happened was. Uh, but I don't expect everyone here to agree with, every, with, with me on all my views and I'm sure we have a wide plethora of views on history and politics here. We all have our own opinions, but it's good to see that so many of us agree on one thing, which is the degeneracy that's coming out of that homosexual Nick Fuentes. So, you know, when I started seeing what he was doing and, and, you know, the people that he, I saw a couple guys, one guy was a Hispanic male. I guess he got pedophilia charges. Yeah. Latino you know, Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I really wish I spoke to you guys before I went on Valuetainment. And just so everyone knows, when I went on Valuetainment, the real story, I went there with a few friends, a few pals, guys that are teddy bears, the innocent, most sweetest guys. I, we didn't do anything. I had to have at least 15 people of my innocent friends stand outside property. Uh, also, I was escorted out of the studio within 10 seconds. And that just goes to show you what kind of what sort of fraud Nick Fuentes is. They act so tough on social media, but then they were just scared of me and my innocent, you know, teddy bear friends when an event came. And uh, you know, it just goes to show you he's so fake. He's such a coward. His friends are cowards. They're they're just filled with cowards, not only pedophiles and homosexuals, but also cowards. And uh, his little bot farm is basically all he has. He spent that whole show bullying a woman. Any of us can bully a woman. Any of us can bully a woman. But then when I, then when I speak up to him, he acts like the victim. I found that incredibly hypocritical. Yeah. And I I'm, just, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go no, finish your, no, you finish your thought. I don't, I don't mean, I know it's a little bit of a delay. No, I just, I just find, I just find, I just find it hypocritical that this guy can attack a woman like that. And it's all good. Hey, if he would have attacked her, I, I, I don't even know her, you know? It's fine. Attack her. I don't give a fuck. But put her in her place all you want. I don't care. But 
at least be okay when someone comes back at you. You know, you want to be about free speech, but then you block and ban people from your own app like a fucking coward, you know, and then you block and ban me, ban me, block me. You know, it's, 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 it's just <laughs> like, I, I just find it incredibly rich. You know what I'm saying? Now, I could understand, to his defense, I could understand if it was someone who had a much smaller audience and it was someone that was promoting some sleazy like crypto project or some sleazy gambling project and they're just trolling to troll to bring attention to their uh you know you know their 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 sleazy project or i could understand if it was just someone who doesn't really have an account but i would like to think that if someone like ethan or bakes or myself if we're coming if we're if we're confronting the guy at least let's have a real conversation man you know for him to block he, you know, he, he, yeah. he's a hypocrite. And then he went on that show and he lied like a fucking dog, man. He <laughs> lied like a dog, yeah. man. He lies, man. He lies well, and lies well, and lies, bro. Go ahead. Not man. even yeah, know. Well, but I just well, know he really, lies. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you 100%. First of all, I just want to say thank you for your service, Nima, because the thing is, all the people that, you know, really want to confront Nick Fuentes with his bullshit, he hides from. That's why he had to have you know, the pre-show call, making sure he's not going to be asked about this or that. So you did a great service to us and, and just to the world. And I agree, the dam has been broken because he is such a fucking coward. He went on that show and I, I was dying. I was watching live die. And I'm like, dude, who is this guy? And he kept saying, hey, no personal attacks. No, dude, Nick Fuentes his whole life is attacking people personally you saw him on twitter saying hey report baked alaska get a channel taken down he's scum he's you know saying i murdered my friend just making up uh slander and lies you know just absolute insanity anybody that knows me knows i love women i don't i haven't murdered anyone um and all that I, i'm actually a january 6th defendant i spent federal prison time for donald trump you know i i support trump and all that i'm very conservative so yeah, like I, I agree with you 100%. And th this guy says he's going to be the, you know, the next president in, in 10 years or whatever, but he can't answer a fucking question and he can't be a man. All he does is hide behind his victim complex. Um, the coward and just say, oh, stop the personal attack. It, it's absolutely pathetic. So any anybody who's a leader knows they got to take accountability for what they've done. And Nick, just a few days ago, in the clip said i want to abolish the age of consent and you know what as someone who's had younger sisters and family members that is disgusting that that really makes my blood boil like this this is re some really sick shit that he's advocating for and he's saying he wants to hold political office you know this is not just some youtuber that's saying some dumb shit here and there you know th this is a guy that really wants to take over the world so i think it is important for you know we don't all agree on every single thing but you know we can draw a line and say hey pedophilia is really fucked up we can you know come together on this and and condemn this guy so i just wanted to say like you're a fucking g bro you're you're a real ass dude and i appreciate you you're fucking dope and thank you for doing what you did because i was watching live and the chat was loving it like we were we were all like cheering you on so so i hope you you know continue to do good work Thanks, man. I, I like Trump too. I've met Trump when I when I was my first year in New York real estate. Uh, when I, you know, I was I used to go to uh, Trump five seven five Madison Avenue to grab food and lunch, and I, I got to a chance to know a lot of the staff there. And uh, Trump, uh, this is like way before he became a president. Uh, he, you know, he took a moment one day. I was I told him I was scared. I was, you know, I went up to him and uh, and he talked to me and he gave me encouragement and uh, he recommended a book for me to read. His book. And I remember him telling me, you're going to do great. And um, so, you know, my personal and, I, and, you know, personal experience with Trump was uh, he really motivated me in a dark point. Uh, so I thought the way Nick Fuentes basically helped set up Trump was pretty sleazy, too, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. He, 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 I, th I think what you guys are doing is actually pretty admirable because you guys know him, you know, like you actually know him. He admires you, too, you know. And I think that's why it's even more, uh, he's more scared. You know, someone said to me, hey, Nima, be careful talking about him being a pedophile. And I actually found that quite rich because I, I thought to myself that they would just shut the fuck up about that because the last thing they would want is for, for someone to say to them, hey, 
you're doing some child porn or you're doing some pornography and then say, well, they can take you to court for defamation. Hey, man, if you're going against someone who has the financial means, let's just say someone like me, I don't give a fuck about spending three, four hundred thousand dollars on lawyers. And you know what? We can investigate this whole situation and see all the skeletons in Nick Fuentes' uh, little closet with his pedophilia group or his pedophilia loving group. I'm not scared. I'm not intimidated by these guys at all. I don't give a fuck. So, you know, the idea, in fact, I would look at it as $500,000 for charity to go to, to, to legal fees just to fucking apprehend and catch if there are anybody there and see what's in this motherfucker's hard drive and see what sort of nastiness is in there. Because you know what? I'm actually a dad and I have a daughter. Some of these motherfuckers are disgusting. So I, I would think if I was Nick Fuentes, I would definitely not bring up anything about court. And then they're going to have these like pseudo lawyers come and talk. Oh, oh, you should be careful what you say. This motherfucker jokes all day and night. Then I joke. And then all of a sudden, that's a the problem. These motherfuckers talk about me dying in a fucking camp and all of these things. Yet, if I say his group loves pedophiles, I'm the one that committed a defamation of character. Well, there's a court of law. And guess what? Once we go to a court of law, my lawyers get a chance to talk in front of an impartial judge. And guess what? We're going to collect a bunch of fucking information on what's going on in his group. And, you know, let's see what happens. If he wants to draw more attention to the skeletons in his closet, I'm not the one. I have zero fear of these high schoolers. I don't care. They're the ones that had me escorted off the studio. I'm not one of these punk kids that he's gone against. I'm his worst fucking nightmare. That's the fucking reality. So, you know, I was I made millions of dollars before I ever got on social media. And yeah, he can laugh, say I'm a money lending Jew. I don't give a fuck. Guess what? I'm a money lending Jew that put, can put a million dollars into a legal fund just to fucking open up the skeletons in his fucking closet. So if he really wants to press, I can play that game, too. And by the way, a lot more. I don't have any skeletons in my closet. That's the thing. I'm a clean boy. I'm a clean man. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm an executive. I've created over 60 jobs. I have a clean slate, clean as a fucking whistle. I never did a crypto pump and dump like these other influencers. I never did any of that shit. Clean as a fucking whistle. Almost impossible to find anything on me other than maybe, uh, you know, I went 10 miles over the fucking speed limit. You know, I'm clean as a whistle. Clean as a whistle. So I have nothing to hide. But Nick Fuentes with all those skeletons in the closet, especially with how many people have reached out to me that know him, that know him. on uh, People in his inner circle who he has, he has 50 snakes in his fucking closet. And the motherfucker, motherfuckers want to come to me and say, Oh, be careful of what you're saying about his group. He's full of pedophilia and homosexuality. He doesn't even realize how many, if, if he, if, listen, you're talking to a guy with conviction. You're talking to a guy, I even have more confidence that he's a fucking scumbag now than a fucking a few days ago. It seems like every 24 hours, people are just DMing me. If I showed you my DMs, it's just how many people have reached out to me now, giving me information on how disgusting and filthy and degenerate this motherfucker is with other people's kids. Motherfucker, this people in his group deserve to be in a fucking prison. You know, who who the fuck would want to have, you know, somebody said something like, oh, well, somebody would want to have lunch with a Jew, but no one would want to have, and I'm Jewish, fine. Okay, I'll take that. I can I can take jokes on Jews. I don't give a fuck. Oh, okay. Oh, someone could have lunch with a Jew, but no one would want to have lunch with a pedophile. I think all of us came together to talk about pedophilia. And his degenerate homosexuality loving group. I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool that this is how many skeletons this fucking jerk off has in his in his group. This is just I want everyone listening to know. Think how many enemies this jerk off has that they would come to a Jew. Me. They would come to a Jew. Me. And give me information on what he has. That I mean, think about this. some of these guys hate Jews. So the fact that they would come to me, give me information. To expose on him, and I haven't even gone down the fucking laundry list. I can I can save that for a rainy day, a long rain fucking laundry list. Of, I go, I'm going easy on this motherfucker. You know, Nick Fuentes, if you're watching, I'm going easy on you, you fucking pedo homosexual. I'm going easy on you. I got a lot of shit on you, a lot. I keep going. All right. Best thing you could do is to fucking back the fuck off me. The best thing you could do is admit that you're a fucking homosexual and fucking stay the fuck away from me. That's really the best thing, pal, because I'm your worst fucking nightmare. Believe me when I tell you.
you are outmatched, outsized, outfinanced, and outsmarted in many dimensions here with me. You're fucking your worst nightmare. And you got a lot of snakes. If you're watching, you homosexual. You got a lot of fucking snakes. And you got a lot of people in your group who just don't like what you're doing. Good people that are going to say, I don't like what you're doing in your group. You actually got good people in your group. That's the fucking other crazy part about it. You actually, I've come to meet some really good people who know you, who don't want to have anything to do with you. And I'm not going to say names because I'm not a fucking snitch. But you'd be amazed which people have reached out to me. You could listen to my voice. This is not a bluff. It's not a bluff. Now, I, I got some questions for you in a super chat. If you want a super chat and a question, one just came in, powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort, other ways, Rumble Rants, all that stuff. I'm checking all that stuff. Uh, if you want to get a question in here uh, for Nima, and I think you said it um, – pretty well there um I, I don't think this guy wants to face discovery uh at all uh yeah i, I don't think that that's the the right play and you know, he, you know he's obviously just slandered bake this weekend with some made-up bullshit um so he you know it, it is funny you pointed out right at the top you know he always likes to play dirty and say all this shit and make up all this shit and then he's the victim when you know when he gets it back in his face and gets attacked on on real shit, um, and that's the way he always plays it, so he can go back to his people and be like, "Oh look, they're attacking me!" Oh oh, um, that's kind of his standard mo. Will Cunning in the super chat says he may not have known all the lore, but his line reading on, uh, I think your entire crew is packed full of pedophiles. That was perfect, by the way, with some Scorsese tier Kino uh, and more true than he could have known. Yeah, that was that was epic. Uh, of course, we watched the whole thing on here. Um, but you mentioned you mentioned getting escorted out of there within 10 seconds. Now, so what happened? I don't know if you know this, but Nick Fuentes is terrified of physical confronta confrontation of any sort, even if it's not going to happen. Like, he's always worried about uh, getting stomped out or getting in a fight. No, I've gotten stomped out. I've been in fights. It is what it is. Um, you know, it doesn't, I don't live my life in fear. Uh, but I remember a story that Jaden told back when the coronavirus was going on and they, they made st people stop wearing the mask and he would still wear it, even though he was telling everybody not to, so that he could go out in public and people wouldn't be able to recognize him. Uh, and so he would often wear the mask just all around town to hide his identity because he's afraid of who he is and, and what people might do to him. Well, the thing is, is that uh, I do want to say, uh, I definitely, you know, don't believe in violence. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not encouraging violence, but just a little story about him. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, and I do respect that. Uh, I, I, the one thing I do respect that homosexual for is that uh, he does say. I've heard him say at least, you know, he doesn't encourage violence and stuff like that. And I think, I think that's when it just becomes like a group of street thugs and stuff, and then it just loses the whole, you know, you know, yeah. point. I mean, he he's easy to beat intellectually. I mean, there's so much, this guy's like a walking Mimi, you know, as I, you know, I think, I think, I think what they don't like about me is the fact that I was able to, you know, now we've gotten over about 20 million views, you know, on several platforms. I don't actually put all my content on my account uh, because I also deal with suppression. I've stood up against toxic feminism, you know, I, the, 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 I'm not favored by mainstream. I mean, I've lost my account over 780,000 followers on that communist filth app, TikTok. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I defended Nick, Nick Fuentes' free speech, you know, but it was just like, I just found that incredibly rich, how he played victim when it suited him, right? He plays victim when it suits him. And then he plays this like strong barbaric man when it suits him. It seemed like in front of me, he didn't want to talk so much about, you know, Jewish people and such. At that point, he was this guy who just wanted to talk about how women shouldn't vote and go to college. And I respect that. He should free, speak freely as he wants. I don't give a fuck, you know, but at the same point, why did he get so defensive when I start coming at him, you know, and, and, and uh, it just seemed like a coward. And I think that shows you what sort of person he is. He's a coward. And we talk about pornography and stuff like this, you know, the child porn, people talk about the porn and stuff. You know, I want to take a moment actually to emphasize something that I actually do feel very strong about. Uh, and that's that pornography is bad, you know, especially uh, at a young age. You know, you become desensitized and soon, you know, you start looking uh, for more. And that's when people, you know, they can start stumbling into child pornography. Uh, they become content with the fact that they can't get any pussy. And their height actually can become stunted as well as the size uh, of their penis. Most have micro penises. That young man, Nick Fuentes, 
is a perfect example of who you don't want to grow up to be. That's actually Alpha King rule number 107, which is uh, pornography. At a young age, it's bad. So to all the young men that are watching this, I just want you to know, stay away from that shit. That shit is disgusting and vile and degenerate. There's nothing cool about pornography and watching child pornography or whatever the fuck these guys are doing in their group. That's it. Yeah, uh, that, I, I, I totally agree with you there. And uh, I'm, ac I'm actually surprised. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know you. I've never met you. I just saw you on that one episode. But, like, you know, you, you're a very reasonable guy. And, uh, you know, there, there's a lot to admire there. So, so, yeah, thank you for sharing all that. And I just wanted to add a little bit that, um, one of the things that I found really, really interesting was the way that you put them on the ropes. I don't know if it was you or the other guy, but someone kept mentioning, they're like, hey, Nick, you know, there, there, there's all these different versions of Nick Fuentes because you go on No Jumper and you're like a civil rights activist. You're like, oh, yeah, I love everybody. I, I love Jews. I love all these people. And then you go on your show and you're like, I want to kill these black people with Hitler and you know, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I, I would at least respect Nick more if he was like, yeah, I, I don't like Jews at all, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't know, like, who he thinks he's fooling. He thinks he's, like, smarter than everyone, and we can't see his little games that he's playing. But really what it is is he's a fucking coward. Once again, dude, listen, I just got out of jail. If Nick Fuentes went to federal prison, he would get his fucking ass raped and beaten hard. They, they would literally have someone on the outside be like, yo, look up this white boy. I, I Google, Google Nick Fuentes. What? White supremacist? Fuck him up. You know, like he would, he has like the, the ideology of Nick Fuentes doesn't work in the real world. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Like it, it took a lot of courage for me because I was like really good friends with him for five years. And you, you, you see the people going after me with the lies and the threats and they're doxing and they're trying to report my chant. Like, it's trust me, it's not not a fun place that I'm in. But the reason that I'm saying all this and coming out with it and, and Ethan Ralph as well is because we see the destruction that this has on young men's lives. If you believe what Nick Fuentes believes, you will have your life ruined. That is just the facts. It's not like 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 what he believes doesn't work in the real world. It's like I, I'll be the first one to say, yeah, women do a lot of fucking annoying shit. And there's this, you know, all these whores and only fans. Uh, epidemic that's going on. Okay, but there's also amazing godly women that fear the Lord and are going to raise children in a very moral way. And we should celebrate those women. And, you know, Nick would say, oh my gosh, you're a simp. It's like, no, dude, you don't live in the real fucking world. You've never talked to a hot woman. You, you, you haven't done shit, bro. You're into dudes. You literally are into blowing dudes. You're, we found the twink porn. We found the training porn on your uh, you know, your iPhone there, Mr. Krabs, but uh, it, it's, it's just insane, dude. Like Nick, Nick is a chameleon. He'll just, you know, a different person around, uh, you know, whoever he thinks he can impress, he panders to all these different audiences, but he'll never just straight up be who he is. Cause I don't think he has a real identity. I think he's just a fucking edge Lord. That's permanently online that has no fucking clue what, where he's going. But yeah, I just want to add that. No, that's a great way to, I think, I think he's scared of you, man. I think he's scared of you. I think he's scared oh, of you. For sure. I mean, he admires you. You guys are like his heroes. He knows he'll never be a strong man like you too. So he probably just hates, you know, I think probably the three things that triggered him the most, I'd say by far, uh, after he had his panic attack with that uh, junkie, John Zerka, the other junkie. Uh, it makes sense, a junkie and a homosexual pedophile, their friend. I mean, he's got, it's, you can't make this up. It's like a fucking Netflix movie. But what really, uh, what really triggered these two guys was when uh, Tristan Tate supported uh, one of the comments I made about him having a micro penis. And, uh, and, then, and then also when he saw that, uh, you know, Ethan Ralph and Baked Alaska were, were, were showing support and then he, you know, he just has this like meltdown, you know, him and that junkie John Zerka have this meltdown and, you know, they, they talk real big. And then, and then as soon as they get a little pushback, and I think this is the first situation they've really gotten pushback at this level where they like their, the water was spilled on like, maybe, I guess you could say the fire, you know, where you can really just see how weak they are. I want everyone uh, watching this to know, and I want everyone to be, I want to really make a big fact check here that 
if you make a comment about Nick Fuentes, you can expect maybe a hundred people to attack you. And they'll, I don't know if these motherfuckers are taking a bot and they're adding like 30, like they'll add like 100,000 views and no one will like it. I don't know if it's completely manipulated. And then they'll fucking raid your comments section, completely just insulting you. And so basically their goal, this is my experience. I could be completely wrong. You guys have way more no, you're understanding. Right. Tactical warfare this fucking pedophile uses. And, and, and in reality, I want every one of you to know to speak up against this pedophile, homosexual, loving guy uh, and his pedophile loving group. Uh, because in reality, they, when they show up, if anyone shows up, the ones that show up are complete pussies. In reality, Nick Fuentes is a little guy. He's a little twerp. And in reality, you have nothing to worry about. Even John Zerka, that junkie. I've asked John Zerka his address on several occasions. He says, I d I've DM'd him at night. Let's meet right here in Miami. DM'd him. Doesn't want to meet, you know? And all the guys I brought with me, they're just like innocent teddy bears. All the fucking threats these motherfuckers gave me. And I want all of you to know, they're going to give you threats too. But they're empty threats. They're fucking cowards. Nick would be named Natalie in a federal prison. <laughs> yeah. I mean, am I wrong? Big, big. <laughs> big, big. Am I wrong? I mean, you just got no, out of prison. No. Would he not no, be no, named? No. Not, he'd be my yeah, dad. No. Nick yeah, would be yeah. my dad. <laughs> I would, oh, if, oh, if Nick, he might if be Nick Tyrone's dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Literally everything, like, this, this is what I'm saying. Like, even look, I'll be honest. I've said a bunch of edgy shit before. You know, I, I, I've gone to a little bit of trouble here and there. And I, I said this when I got out of prison, I was like, damn, I really learned how to respect all different types of people. Because if you don't respect somebody, you're getting ass beaten yes. hard. I'm talking real, like, you might die, you might get stabbed. Prison is no fucking joke. County jail is no fucking joke, okay? And listen, there, there's a lot of legal things, you know, Nick's dipping his toe in a lot of legal situations right now, which is very interesting. And, and I'm, I'm just saying, listen, I, I, I'm a tough guy. Ethan Ralph, tough guy, Nima, you know, we, we can handle situations like that. They're, they're, they're hard, they're stressful. Yeah, but I'm good. I didn't get my ass beat. Nick would get ass raped, 100%. He would get his ass fucking beat in prison. So it's like he maybe needs to think about that. Like, whoa, maybe I maybe I should pull back from all these legal situations I'm putting myself in because in that that is not going to be a fun road. You know, we we could handle it. Tough men could handle it, but going to prison that shit that shit is not an easy road. Yes, the thing of also I'd like you know the thing of you, you nailed it, man. You fucking nailed it. And the thing is, is that I think we all love America here. You know, I think I think there's yeah there's you know no every group is you know you have a plethora of views but we all love america i mean i love america you know and and i agreed to, to some things that nate did say i mean uh nick did say that, that i did agree on initially you know was when he talked about you know family and faith and the importance of faith you know i married a, a woman who's an evangelical christian you know and i live in germany and and uh you know but i will say that I respect people of faith and I respect the traditional gender roles of a man and a woman. And I think there were some things that Nick and I did agree on. I think probably a lot of us here even agree on, but then where it got dark and fucking degenerate was when you start seeing all these pedophiles, like there's just way too many pedophiles and there's just way too many pedophiles in his group. And it's just, it just seems like there's just so much, you know, and, and, and it, it, when there's a lot of smoke, you know, there's a fire there. You know, when there's this much smoke coming out, man, there's a fucking fire there. Man. Yeah, there's something going on in that group. And I can't, re I can't reiterate this enough. All of you who are like, you know, me, you know, in a couple of weeks, let's say I move on, you guys move on from this. But just remember, to all the guys that are, that'll end up seeing this, all of you, you can stop this guy by exposing the pedophilia, exposing the degenerate homosexual pedophilia, ideals values and principles this group espouses by confronting them and don't worry you're probably talking to a fucking teenager i'm telling you because when i was there at valuetainment no one was there for nick no one all that talk no one was there he was scared he was fucking scared like a little fucking weasel all that talk 
a fucking coward. So don't let don't let this guy gaslight you. That's really my final. Speak up, defend Ethan, def- defend Baked, defend everyone that's going out there on the fucking limb to expose this fucking pedo homosexual loving group. Uh, and, and by the way, thank you for coming on. I, and um, I, I don't know how much time you got, but I, I did want to uh, ask you a, a little bit about Ali Alexander. Um, and have you have you seen it? You know, his top advisor, um, basically under police investigation for soliciting dick pics from uh, teenage boys and trying to meet up with them in real life. I mean, I can only assume he did meet up with some of them, but we don't have proof on that. But uh, that's his top advisor that he talks to every day. The fucking guy lied. I mean, he, 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 gosh, he's a fucking liar, man. When I watched that show that he did, I guess he did a show last night. Yeah. The fucking guy lies. I mean, he's like a pathological fucking liar, you know? The, the guy was, so, I mean, it's, it's so beyond level. It's like maniac level lying. You know what I'm saying? It's not even like lying, like, oh, you know, my dick is seven inches, it's five inches. You know, it's not like, oh, I got $10 million, you got, you know, 10 hundred, you know, you got, you got $10,000. All right, fine. That's a big lie. But like his lies are just fucking completely fucking beyond to a whole nother fucking world. So like the idea that he was like, everyone agreed with him at the studio. No one agreed with that jerk off at the studio. No one agreed with that jerk off at the studio. They were scared. He was going to fucking leave. That's the truth. Oh, this, he said on the show, oh yeah, people came. Everyone agreed with me. Oh, everyone in the comment section agreed with me. Everyone in the comment section from your fucking bot farm, your fucking 15 teenagers with three YouTube accounts who all come in there and fucking troll the shit out of me. It was it was outrageous. The level of lying that he did. Didn't that someone came? Someone came from the studio and said how he did a great job. Bro, the fucking guy is delusional the way he's gaslighting his fucking little teenage audience. And he, and he does that often. I'm glad you spoke out about the bots and stuff because that's exactly now they do have some people, but these are you know they have bots and they also have people with multiple accounts and they try to flood you on Twitter and like intimidate on that level and it's called astroturfing basically and that's why they run into the comments and try to plant their bullshit there and you know try to swarm people because it is intimidating. It's not intimidating to me because I've been around for ten years and you know people were trying to do that to me ten years ago. Um, and so I've seen it all, but to a lot of people, it can be intimidating though, where it's like, Oh my God, what's happening? And where's this coming from? And Holy shit, I'm getting swarmed. And so I I think that you're right that there are some people, hopefully that are coming out of the woodwork now, and I'm starting to see it a little bit, um, who maybe didn't criticize him when he, you know, should have come under fire because they just didn't want to get involved with that. It's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that there was actually a, a name for, um, yeah, you know what's called astroturfing, and what's and, and what's remarkable is that they're promoting uh, this bigotry and hatred as they're 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 like you know they're virtue signaling as their group is fucking in love with the idea of like pedophilia and homosexuality. I just find that incredibly fucking rich. You know, no wonder Trump didn't want to have anything to do with him. There's there's a good there's you know of course Trump wouldn't want to have anything to do with this fucking pedophile loving group that he's associated with. You know. And, and, uh, it makes sense. You know, it really, it really makes sense. Some people deserve, some people deserve disrespect. Some people don't, you know, let's say for example, trans people, for example, people who just want to live their lives for how they truly feel on the inside. Sure. I'll call them awful names to their face, but I would never disrespect them. The people who deserve disrespect are those who just push out bigotry and hate for a chance that the one thing that has eluded them their entire lives pussy <laughs> people like nick fuentes and that's actually alpha king rule number 76 which is spreading hate is for bigots virgins and little boys with twats which are you Hey, no. I, I, Go ahead, I, I, I'm, so, I'm sorry to uh, interrupt with, with not so serious of a thing, but um, I'm not I'm not sure if these are the same rules. But when I was in county jail, this CO kept coming by. He's like, rule 115, watch your ass. 
I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, are, those, are those the same rules? I don't know. Just, man, I'll, I'll just throw that funny, out there. Man. That's funny, man. <laughs> That's fucking- <laughs> like dude, these motherfuckers would roll in and they're like they're all fucking fucked up on fentanyl. They're shitting their pants and they're pissing. And he's like, "Rule fit, rule one fifteen, wash your ass." And we just we would crack up every time. So I I don't know if that's the same set of rules, but just had to throw that out there. No, that's funny, but you know it's, it'd be interesting though. No bullshit. Now that I think about it, if Nick Fuentes would be in a prison. Uh, sell what you or me like he really would be called oh, Natalie. Oh my, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, exactly. Like that is the thing to picture because fuck, it's like that he he is not built for that. You got to understand no, this dude for, for for all the for all the shit he talks. He oh. eats McDonald's every day, fast food. Doesn't work out. In fact, he actually makes fun of people that work out. He's like, working out is gay. Having sex with women is gay. Like, yeah, and you know what it is? Is that yeah. Nick Fuentes is so insecure that he wants everyone around him to be beta. Because that's the only way that he'll feel like the king or he'll feel like he has any authority if everyone around him is pathetic. Because the way he lives is absolutely pathetic. And it's not the way that our young men should be uh you know they shouldn't be looking up to him they should they, they need better role models uh not nick nick fuentes is the worst role model that that's like the example don't be like this guy but holy shit man yeah he, he would not have a fun time if, if you don't mind, hey man if you, if you two don't mind me asking because it's obvious that you know he respects you too and he looks up to you guys and i could see why now after talk i mean i've actually talked to nick ethan and baked in the last seven days i mean i've actually had this unique position uh, to talk to all three of you in the last, literally in the last week. Uh, I've, I've met Nick, uh, but I would say I could see how he admired, he admired you guys, probably still does, probably just, you know, doesn't want to talk to you guys, I would imagine. But I, I could tell you guys, but what, I, I don't know, what, what did happen where you guys are not with him anymore? With me? Oh. Uh, well, I'll let Bay go yeah, first. Go and, well, you go okay. ahead and I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I mean, people ask this and it's, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's really simple. So about a couple years ago, I sort of sensed this happening and it, it, it correlates to what I was just talking about is I was good friends with Nick for a long time. And just slowly over time, he started to get into some weird shit. It was like, I, I, I would be like talking about hot girls and stuff. And he'd be like, dude, that's cringe. I'm like, wait, what? And uh, the Groypers, his fans, they would spam like memes about gay sex. I'm not, I'm not joking. And and I literally like left group chats. I'm like, dude, this is fucking gay. And they're like, oh, you just don't get it. You're, you don't understand our irony. And I'm like, bro, I understand jokes. This, this shit, hey, like you got, like you, like, listen, I'm not, I don't advocate for people to be simps. Of course not. Like you got to respect, you got to be a respectable alpha male but like they're literally not interested in women like it was giving me gay vibes but i i would just you know kind of play it off like because they said oh it's irony but then like i i basically just saw too much i'm like this this is really not my jam like i i yeah i agree with nick on some of the conservative stuff obviously i think a lot of us do but what happens is he poisons the well by throwing in pedophilia and you know covering for pedophiles like ali alexander um and uh, he actually Attack the victims. So the guy Smiley, who we confirmed that sent dick pics to Ali Alexander when he was 15, and Ali uh, was promising him a political career, which is so fucked up, and Ali should be in jail. Uh, Nick was attacking Smiley and calling him a piece of shit and, and, and all sorts of stuff. And, and you know what Nick said? He said, "I'm the real victim." That's what Nick Nick said. He was the real victim, even though there was a 15 year old getting preyed upon by a fucking dirty rat pedophile, Ali Alexander. It was, so, bro, I gotta tell you, so the last couple of years, shit, shit we, we, we've been distancing ourselves. You know, he was even jealous about my company. He was jealous about like, just weird shit. But I'll tell you, when I heard him say he was the real victim and he covered for that pedophile, that's when I said, I'm fucking out. And I said, I'm not working with Ali Alexander and guess what? Nick called me. He hadn't called me in years. And he called me and started running damage control for the guy. 
And that's when I, I'm like, bro, this is real fuck. There's, there's some, like, this guy's got blackmail on him or some weird shit. Like, that's what I think. I'm very, like, a kind guy. I'm, I'm understandable. I, I will get along with anyone. Like, ask anybody. I'm very nice. And, but I, that, that was too far for me. I, I, I said I was out. And ever since, up, Nick went nuclear. He banned me from Cozy. He's been, uh, you know, reporting all my channels and spreading lies about me. So that's basically how it happened with me. Um, and, and and I'll tell you this too. I also was trying to be like, you know, an uh, older brother to him. I was like, hey, I love you, bro. I about this and that, but you know, the, the, this pedophile thing, like, that's really wrong. You know, like you're not handling this well. And he just blew up at me. He doubled down. Uh, they're talking about forced child marriage with yeah. 12 year olds, except like it, 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 it's the sickest of the sick. And, and I've seen a lot of shit in my time, but this, this, this is as dark as it gets. And, 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 and then all of a sudden I start seeing like, holy shit, like Nick is a cult leader. He is, he is a fraud. He just lies and he has this sick agenda and everyone just believes him because he has, you know, 500 people in his chat going crazy. And it's, that that's actually what's going on. And I'm glad that I can at least say this, uh, you know, with authenticity as a guy who was really close to Nick for five years, like he, it, you can go watch shows and he said, I was like one of his best friends. So I, I wouldn't normally even be talking about this. I would just move on if it was just some friendship. But like I said, the reason I'm saying this shit is because he's still got people under his spell. He's still got people like Sneeko and Zerka that are, peddling this bullshit and saying oh yeah nick's nick's the greatest thing since sliced bread and it's like nah bro this ain't it dude this, this fucking ain't it this shit is wrong it's disgusting it's it's you know children are being preyed upon he's covering for it it's criminal so that's when i said i'm fucking out so that's my story yeah and and for me um you know, I was kind of just adjacent, I guess you could say, like a supporter, but I wasn't really in uh, America first. And they they launched Cozy TV, and I was having some problems, like getting a steady place to stream at the time. And and I ended up coming aboard uh, Cozy TV, and I was like, okay, the site works good, and nothing wrong here. And you know, I've supported Nick traditionally, uh, and so I moved the kill stream over there. Now the kill stream been around for a while, uh, and was a big thing before he was a big thing. And so I had my own base, I had my own style and, and all that. Um, the longer I stayed there though, the more constrictive, uh, it became right. Uh, and the more you're kind of, I guess, adjacent or like closer to them, the more they want to try to control and, and stifle. And, you know, there were some comments made by him that I, you know, I took notation of basically um kind of taking a shot at me where he could say he wasn't taking a shot um and you know i took note of that but i was like oh well you know he's joking whatever and um you know that kind of went on for a while i i had some personal problems to be quite frank with you and some struggles with alcohol and uh xanax if i'm being uh particularly honest um and so i i kind of started going into uh, a personal tailspin earlier this year um, after a big uh, Ralph Mania wrestling event and all that stuff went well, but I kind of let those demons resurface and you know, that, that was a problem for me. But um, when that started to happen, uh, they basically tried to move on me and, you know, try to, you know, I would, I would see reports of them talking shit and doing this and, you know, Ralph, maybe we can get him off cozy and this and that. So treachery like that. And I really just kind of let it go. And he was having a rally coming up in Florida, and that was last month. Um, I think it was it was July, right? Yeah, July. And, um, you know, I was like, oh, well, I'll go to the rally, right? Okay. You know, I'm kind of down in the dumps. Let's go to the rally and hang out with with the guys. And his Lieutenant Black Swan's like, yeah, you can stay with me. And da, 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 da. Well, when I got to the airport, first off, I didn't tell anybody, but like, I guess I told Swan or one of the gropers that I had landed. Well, they went on Twitter and said I'd landed at the airport, which might not be that bad, big of a deal, but, uh, people were trying to serve me with a lawsuit, uh, actually when I got to the airport and did serve me. And although we might be contesting that service, but whatever, um, they did serve me. And I was, uh, you know, not in the best way. And I kind of sat down at the airport and got 
drunk basically after that because I didn't I, I didn't like that obviously um, and I put out this video and you know I was obviously fucked up in the video and all of a sudden Swan's like well you can't come to the Airbnb well I didn't have any place to stay uh, so I ended up staying in this hotel for the night and I got up the next day and I was sober I've been sober since actually um, but I was sober and they're like, well, you still can't come to the Airbnb and all the people were coming over there and stuff. And I, they're like, no, you can't come. I'm like, okay. And then on Twitter, I start noticing the swarms, uh, coming at me, uh, attacking me on Twitter, like Groypers and their influencers, et cetera. And I'd seen this happen with baked Alaska already. And I already took note about what they did to him and how they, you know, basically tried to get him to kill himself and just attacked him on every level possible and deleted his telegram chat and all this just right try to write his judge to get him more time and so i already took note of that and saw what they did to him and he'd been around them a lot longer than i had and so i was thinking well if they'll do it to him they'll definitely do it to me uh and so i talked to a couple people i think it's known that one of those people i talked to was milo um milo Yiannopoulos, who i don't think nick knew this but uh we go back to the very beginning of my career, like almost a decade. Uh, and I talked to, it wasn't just him though, but I talked to a couple people and I had considered going back to Merida. I live here in Mexico in the Yucatan. And so I'd put out a tweet where I was like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll just get on a flight and go back. And they were still attacking me, but they were like, yeah, you should just go back. Da, 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 da. And I talked to a couple people and they're like, you can't get run out of town by this little faggot excuse my language uh and you just can't let that happen because it's just a terrible look and the more i thought about it the more i was like yeah that would be a terrible look uh, but you know what would be a better look torching his ass and so i started working uh an op kind of behind enemy lines uh at that point uh and i put out um I put out some videos. I was at one of these parties, and they were chanting, we want Ralph, we want Ralph. Well, I took a video of it. By the way, they were all pissed drunk. Uh, I wasn't. I was sober. So I took a video of all these drunk people, drunk America Firsters, uh, chanting my name, took a couple videos of it, and put it out on Twitter and kind of split the opposition, basically, where someone was like, yeah, leave Ralph alone. We like him. And the others, they were arguing with each other uh, at that point. And then I put out a tweet. It was like, no, nah, you know what? I got to go to the rally. I got to show my support. I, I was bullshitting, by the way, at this point. But I was like, I got to go to the rally. I got to so show my support for Nick Fuentes and, you know, meet the fans. And, you know, I, I just got to I got to man up and do that. It would be it would be wrong for me not to go and support Nick. That's how I phrased it. And um, so the next day. Um, I was still kind of, uh, behind enemy lines and learning all this shit and I ended up dropping all that info, but, um, the next day was his rally, which they try to keep secret. Um, even though it's a political rally, they have no right to secrecy on something like this at all. And so I found out where it was, uh, right after it got announced, I won't go through my full method there, but I found out where it was, uh, and I blasted it across Twitter. Uh, and I also blasted the names of some of his top lieutenants. Um, actually, I put it on Telegram, but I put the address on Twitter and Telegram. Um, and I put the names out of some of his top lieutenants uh, who are freaks and weirdos. And um, then I went to the parking lot and started trolling the parking lot. I didn't go up on the property, though, because I was afraid he'd try to get me arrested or something. But uh, I went to the parking lot and, and trolled people. And then uh, I flew back to Merida and been putting in that work ever since. Uh, so that's my story on how it happened. But what, what pushed me was like petty disrespect, honestly. But it didn't take but a day or two to realize, wow, that was, I'm glad that petty disrespect happened because like these people are sick. They really are full of pedophiles. And so that stuff kind of came later. Um, but I'd already like, even before all this stuff happened, his rhetoric uh, has went off the rails. And, you know, I've been critical of, quite frankly, Zionism and, and Zionist power and stuff like that. That's one thing, right? Um, it, it's different when you're on Rumble, you know, throwing the salute and you're you're on Alex Jones talking about I love Hitler and stuff like that and holy war with the Jews. I don't talk like that uh, and don't think like that. And so um, that had kind of annoyed me. He, he doesn't seem to care about anybody he might be associated with uh, with some of the things he says. So that, that that was kind of something that was bubbling, but that's not why it happened. But that was something that I was disturbed by. And his war on the age of consent. You know, I was still kind of around when he's talking about, oh, I'm 30. When I'm 30, I'm going to want a 16 year old bride and kids should be getting married. I mean, there's just a lot of fucking 
just f- freaked out shit there. Uh, what, do you, with you. what do you guys, what do you two predict will happen with it? Like in the next, like if we just, like let's just say hypothetically, like in, the, in like two, three years, where do you see, where, where do you guys see him going? Uh, well, I would say federal prison, but uh, he seems to be working for the feds, so I don't know. Um, if that will actually take place, but, uh, but, uh, so, um, you know, I, I don't think he's headed anywhere good. And, you know, if you look at some of his statements recently, I mean, I mentioned the Holy war statement there. I mean, that's kind of bonkers to be, to be saying that. Right. Um, oh, well, and, yeah. but I was just gonna say, I, and you can pick it right back up there, but, but what he said about yeah. bake this weekend, uh, just making up shit and dragging up dead bodies basically to try to, you know, um, slander people. And, you know, I think he's kind of losing his mind if he ever had it. And, um, (laughs) you know, I don't, I don't think it's headed anywhere good. I think that there's a mountain of dirt out there on him behind the scenes that we haven't even, you know, got a real taste of yet. And I expect stuff like that to Mm -hmm. to come out over the next few years, but, uh, go ahead, bake. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to say, and, uh, I completely agree there, but, um, you know, if, the feds could create a right-wing boogeyman that absolutely made us look terrible, made us look all like fucking pedophiles, make us look awful, you know, forced child marriage. I literally, like I said, I've heard some sick shit in my day. I, I've been on 4chan. I know I'm a shit poster. I haven't even heard of that. Like, what the fuck? Like, so it's like the way I'm looking at it is like, wait, hold up. First of all, Nick Fuentes testified in front of the January 6th commission under oath behind closed doors. What the fuck happened during those meetings with Liz Cheney, with all the fucking Democrats that want to put Trump in jail, that hate us, that want us fucking dead? You want to talk about feds? What the fuck happened in that meeting? Because people talk all the time. Oh, big, you know, you went, you only got two months. You took a plea deal. Yeah, so did 99% of the people. That That's very standard. All my shit's public, okay? I've, and I've been very transparent. I, I think we need to demand Nick Fuentes tell us what happened in that meeting with Liz Cheney and the January 6th Commission. Why don't we release the transcripts? I, th- I think the world, you know, if you're who you say you are, Nick, why don't we release the transcripts and see what you actually said in that meeting with the January 6th Commission? Because... I see a video of you telling people to go into the Capitol and break laws, and then all your supporters get arrested and are spending months or years in federal prison, and you're laughing at them. You're, you're doxing them. I put this out on my Twitter. He doxed and laughed at two different ex groipers who went into the Capitol and are now serving years in federal prison. He's, he's laughing at patriots that sacrificed for our country and are paying the price for it, okay? He's laughing at you, and, and, and that's what people need to understand. You know, he, he's gonna go on these shows and pander to the audiences and say, oh, I, I'm the most bad man in the world. I'm the most patriotic, conservative guy. I love Trump. But if you actually look at his character, he's laughing at people that are patriots. He's laughing at their myths, their suffering, because uh, he's a narcissist, because he's a piece of shit. He's a pathological liar and a manipulator. Um, so I, I just think we, we need to actually, you know, look at who this guy is and the amount of damage, uh, you know, th- that he's doing. Um, also, he banned you from. Yeah, I, he did. I thought you should add that. He, he banned you from Cozy, Dan that. Bank. But, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I just want I wanted to say, I think we should look a little more into this because, like I said, if the feds were to create someone that would make us look bad, that would exactly be Nick Fuentes. Man, you got, you know, it's interesting you say how he lied, uh, like about the people that were there. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because when I watched him do that show, I guess he did last night. And, you know, he starts talking, he starts the show basically talking about me and he lied. And the way he lied about what happened at that studio, I mean, it was so blatant. And it was so like I'm, I was just there and I was just there fucking floored how he talked about how basically everyone agreed with him. It was complete. It was a complete fucking lie, man. It was a complete lie. And, and by the way, I didn't even ever meet Michael 
uh, certain. I, I don't know him. I didn't know anybody else that was on, on there. And I barely got a chance to talk. So this idea that we all ganged up on him, not really. They were actually going pretty easy on him. Literally, they were going pretty easy on him. Because, it, because I think at least Adam was. At least the fucking, uh, the, the lady next to Adam, uh, who helps Adam, uh, she was. They were going really nice with him, man, because they didn't want him to fucking leave. But I can tell you, because I was there, he didn't have a big group with him. I don't think he had anybody with him. And then two, uh, he didn't win in that studio. P people were disgusted. So that's it. Like, it just like, uh, and then the way he lied on the show, I guess last night, how he lied like that was fucking to me like okay i'm dealing with someone that's a compulsive fucking pathological fucking liar so do i think that it's plausible based on my character assessment based on the fact that i met this guy last thursday and shook his hand i watched him lie I met him do i think it's plausible that he would throw someone and discard them if if he was looking at getting a conviction yeah so I, I think it's quite plot based on what I saw. I think I think Bake, you're app you're, you're right, man. You're right. He probably definitely. I could. I mean, I I don't know. I wasn't there, but but I would imagine he threw everybody under the fucking bus. Why wouldn't he? He threw. He fucking lies over something that small. Last night on his fucking show. Why wouldn't he lie if he's facing facing a fucking conviction and imprisonment? That's exactly what I think. Uh, and like Big said or alluded to, um, you know, there's footage of him at, the, or, you know, at the Peace Monument on Capitol Grounds, not in the restricted area, but right next to it, where he's literally saying, disregard police orders, tear down the barrier. We're about to take back the people's house. And his money got frozen after he was put on the no fly list. And then mysteriously, he didn't get charged. And mysteriously, all these groipers or AFers, whatever you want to call it, uh, now suddenly they're not really AF and they weren't associated with him. Um, I mean, you talked about where there's smoke, there's fire earlier. Um, that's my view on that. And we know for a fact there were feds all throughout that crowd. Now, what I don't know if he was fed before or fed after. Um, you know, maybe he was even there before. But, I, you know, this guy is not a stand-up guy, to use a mob term, right? Like, he's not going to be a stand-up guy. He's definitely going to flip. Oh, by the way, your your sound cut out there for a sec. Oh, okay, you just went. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right, man. Because I think the way that he was able to lie like that, I guess to Big's point. So basically, if I understand correctly, Nick Fuentes was there uh, on January sixth. Yeah. He told his followers and supporters to go hard, storm the Capitol. Yes. And then he didn't do it. Right. And then when everyone got in trouble, he went cat to the Capitol, spoke with Liz Cheney and basically possibly, possibly threw everyone under the fucking bus because somehow he was the one that didn't get any charges pressed. Is that about right? I, I don't know. Yeah. Does that sound about right? Yes. It sounds exactly right. Um, and yeah, he encouraged and literally, I mean, incited people to do that. And then he didn't do it. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I'm saying he's, so I'm sorry. He, he's actually a snitch. He's That's not. That's <laughs> Well, well, yeah, and, and, and yeah, j just to add there, like, it actually gets worse than that, because not only is he a snitch, but like I said, so, you know, there's a level of respect with people. Listen, like, I'm a January 6th defendant. There's about a thousand of us that are arrested. There's some people I don't agree with. You know, I, I don't I support traditional traditional marriage between one man and one woman. So there's people that are gay, like Brandon Straka or whoever that are January 6th defendants. But you know what? Out of principle, because I actually have respect, uh, I support him in this very case. I support everybody that's a January 6th defendant, and I will have their back till I die, just you know, regarding this legal case. But Nick Fuentes doesn't have any principles, so if one of his supporters you know, said something he doesn't like or they're not a supporter of his anymore, Guess what he's done? He's done this to several guys. He doxed them, put out their full name, their picture. He's talking about their parents. He's laughing about them, uh, you know, being in prison. These are patriots that are being uh, prosecuted by Joe Biden and the evil Democrat Party. You know, so everything we're supposed to preach against. 
and Nick is alongside laughing. So, you know, what, what does that tell you? And look at, listen, I tried to make it cool with Nick for months and months and months. Ralph tried to do the same. The, you know, you don't treat people like this. And that's why I feel really vindicated doing what I'm doing once again is because it's real fucked up. It's real dark what he's doing. It, this is not some, you know, internet games or uh, throwing insults back and forth. No, th th this is a very dark, malicious individual. Uh, and when he's confronted, he is a complete pussy and pretends like he's just a victim eternally. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's an absolute joke, dude. So it's, um, you know, I, I'm you know, going to keep calling this guy out till the day I die. That, like, that's how serious it is for me. I, you really, I, hey, man, you get it. I think, I, I think, I think, Ethan, you get it too. I, I just, I don't think, like, I, I don't think a lot of people just realize what sort of fucking person this guy is, man. Like, I, you get it, man. I, like, really, like, he, he's not, he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking snitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, fucking his pedo loving homosexual group. I mean, he's a fucking snitch. Well, yeah, I, 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 I knew him. him. You know, I was like, I was one of his best friends for five years. That's what I'm saying. I, I know him better than anyone. I literally, you know, uh, so it's like, I, I, I'm not just some guy. I mean, you met him one time and like, hey, hats off to you. you you've got some like crazy instincts because you, you really picked up on a lot. Like, I'm not going to lie. So, so that's Nick's game is he keeps moving into new crowds. You probably don't know this. He just like. He, he got rid of his old friends, you know, me and Ethan, and now he's drifting over into, you know, Sneeko, Zerka, Pearl. They don't fucking know Nick. They, 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 they've only been with Nick on, like, a fucking show or, you know, whatever. They don't fucking – I've known him for – like, I know the actual Nick Fuentes off camera, and he's not a nice guy. He's not – he's a miserable, miserable person. Like, he's miserable to be around. It, it's really, really bad. And, you know, you write it off. For, you can only write it off for so long. You make excuses. You say, oh, he's, you know, he's under a lot of stress or it's irony or whatever. But no, at, at, at the end of the day, his, his true character has, has come out on many occasions, uh, many, many, many occasions. And we've given him many chances, but he's crossed a lot of lines that we're not cool with. <laughs> and we will never be cool with that. So I, I just want to say, you know, for the people listening out there that might be new to the kill stream or, or maybe you've been here for a while. Like I, I'm speaking genuine from the heart, and and I don't even, like I don't even hate him. I, I love I truly as a Christian, I do wish the best for everybody, and, and I do wish that he repents from his evil ways. But the current state of what he's pushing is some bullshit, and, and, and I don't stand for that. Take it from me, a guy that was almost his best friend for five years. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Nima. No, nah, man, I just, yeah, fuck, man, I'm, I'm really, I feel like this is almost therapy talking to you guys because it's, it is vindication. I mean, I just watching him lie like that last night. I mean, and, and it, it, fuck, man, it just, it is almost like therapeutic, man, for us to just talk because it's, he, he, he does gaslight. He fucking lies. He's so fucking, such a fucking weasel con artist. You know, he's fucking lies, man. Fucking lies. It, it's, it's remarkable. And I'm just really it's therapeutic that we can talk about this, honestly, for the, like you say, vindication. I think you nailed it, man. I, I feel vindicated just hearing this, shit, you know, because I'm like, all right, well, I'm not the only one. And I think, and I think the more he does this shit to people, the more people he's going to get that are going to speak up. You know, I don't, this may not, hey, man, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. And, yeah, for sure. and who knows? You know, I, honestly, I'm, I'm really happy I met you guys. I mean. Wow, like you guys just like man, it's it's I, I did if you would have told me one week ago today that I'd be talking to you two and you two know him and uh and so many people would have reached out to me from his camp or used to be a part of his camp, I wouldn't have I don't know if I would have believed you. I I, I completely did not expect last week that this would happen. I didn't expect this, man. I really did like this is something I just you know it's like you know like everyone has the plan until they throw the first punch, nice. then you don't know what's gonna happen. I didn't know this was gonna happen. I, I like literally big names like within this little space, this little sub niche, have reached out to me, and they're like, "Hey, take this information, press it forward." But you know, 
Hey, man, let's see what happens next. And and I, hopefully uh, all, all three of us can stay in touch. Definitely. You know, you know, because you never know what Nick's going to do next. And that way, uh, you know, we can keep holding him accountable. Hopefully he stops being like this. You know, hopefully he stops promoting uh, the degeneracy that he's promoting. Hopefully he gets rid of any pedophiles in his group. Hopefully he's not a homosexual any longer. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Hopefully he, he becomes a good standing person and stops promoting this fucking hatred and uh, doesn't set up Donald Trump and uh, becomes a good fucking patriot, you know, and, and doesn't ever snitch on any of his fucking friends. <laughs> Hopefully that happens. Yeah. That, Maybe good change. Oh, nice. let me ask not you this. For much. No, that's not much. You know, that's not much in my opinion. Let me ask you this real quick before you go. Uh, there was a super, there was a super chat. It might be much for him, but uh, there was a super chat here from Jacuzzi, the top mod in the chat. He says, "Great segment all around, guys." Nima, where can we find your book of rules? Oh man, I, I have a book that uh, it's called Alpha King Rules. Uh, it's it's largely uh, you know entertainment, but there's also like business lessons and stuff, and that should be on Amazon uh, by October first. So oh, so it's coming out still. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, by October first. But, but, but I, but I will say, man, I, I, I feel so much better. Uh, a, a, anyone listening to this, also, I want to emphasize because I'm new to this, sure. And I really want to say, Ethan and Bakes, they're fucking real ones, man. You know, I, I don't know everything you guys talk about. Clearly, I'm like a visitor, you know. But Ethan and Bake were guys that uh, helped me when I was getting attacked by the mob. Kristen Tate stood by me when I was getting yeah. attacked by the mob and so many other fucking big creators that I know that are friends with me on my other fucking social media platforms where I go have viral videos. So many of them just watched me get attacked by a fucking mob of, of uh, that homosexual Nick Fuentes group. You know, when I was getting attacked in the past several days, really, I'm telling you, all my friends basically were quiet. The only one that stood up, you know, gave us an endorsement was Tristan Tate. And then two guys I don't even know until a few days ago, Ethan Ralph and uh, Baked Alaska. They were willing to say, fuck that. We're going to stand by this guy. Yeah, he's a Jew, but we're going to stand by this guy because what this motherfucker Nick Fuentes is doing is so fucking wrong. So I say that to say this. If any of you find yourself getting bullied, harassed, taunted by that fucking pedoph pedophilia loving group, Go and speak to Ethan and Baked Alaska and start sharing information. And if you're inside of that homosexuals group, give information to Ethan Ralph. Give information to Baked Alaska. These guys aren't fucking scared. You know, they went against the fucking tide. You know, that's, I, I don't even know until a few days ago. We all just met. But I can tell you, at least they have some fucking character. At least they have some fucking baseline of character that fucking homosexual Nick Fuentes does not have. Very cool That's of you, it. sir. Final words. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your work last week. Uh, and you've been really cool to me. Uh, and we've talked a little bit behind the scenes. And uh, I like you a lot. So I wish you the best. Uh, and hopefully we can have you back on sometime down the line. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, I'm sure. I, I'm sure. Uh, with with next everything happening next year, something will happen that the three of us probably will get. Back on I think we'll link up again for sure. Name me, yeah. Tell people where to find you. Uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram. Uh, check me out on Instagram, or just type in my name on YouTube or uh, TikTok. You'll see my videos. Very cool, Bank. Do you, you want to say anything? Me. Uh, thank you, man. I, pr I appreciate you coming on. Did you want to say anything to him? Real yeah. Quick? Yeah, just uh, Nima, you're a fucking real one, bro. Like, like I said, I, I was pleasantly surprised how cool you were and, and just real matter of fact. Uh, please save me a signed copy of your book, if you don't <laughs> mind. Uh, so, sounds like the dope shit, but uh, Ethan Ralph's going to be coming to Florida soon. So I, yeah. I think, you know, I think Nick might have a little meltdown if the three of us did a little, you know, impromptu stream or something. He might. Well, I love that. Okay. He might just piss his pants, so I think that could be cool. <laughs> All right, you know what? But yeah, have, have a good one. I'll stay up with you on that. Maybe we could set something up, or if not a stream, just dinner or something like that. That'd be fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you coming. I, I, love the the whole, I, I, I don't leave Germany till next month, and when I do leave, I, I hopefully I'm only gone for a few weeks, but 
if by chance in the next month you guys come out here, man, I'd love to host you guys for dinner. Awesome. Uh, here in Miami. Yeah, I'd love to host you too. It'd be, it'd be a pleasure to meet you guys. Honestly, I really That'd need be that. great. Well, you know what? I may be there the next month, actually. So uh, I'll keep in touch. And thank you, sir. I really appreciate this interview. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thank you again for having me. All right, you too. You're welcome. Uh, Nima Yamini here on the Kill Street making his live debut. Are you not entertained? Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.